Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I appreciate it. Hope you're doing well, staying safe and healthy out there. And if you're new here, I'm Jim. It's great to meet you. I make tutorial videos here every week showing you how I edit my photos using different software products. Today I'm in Luminar 4 and I'm talking about radial masks. Uh, I gotta admit, when I first started masking things and really using Luminar, I was always kind of like, oh, brush mask. I can put the stuff, whatever it is I'm doing, exactly where I want it. it makes perfect sense. Oh, gradial mask, you know, I can come in and, you know, basically anything below the horizon, boom, it's masked, makes perfect sense. Even luminosity mask, I was like, oh, the brighter parts, I kind of need to do one thing, the darker parts, I kind of need to do another thing. Seems pretty logical, let me use the luminosity mask. But a radial mask, you know, I was always kind of like, oh, I don't know how much I'm gonna use those, because, you know, by definition, the radial mask, you're kind of making a circular or oval shape, and I'm like, I don't shoot pictures with circles in it, like, when am I gonna need that? And, um, apart from my just complete ignorance, um, you know, I just didn't give it a lot of thought. And so now that I'm uh, much more deeper in Luminar and I mask all the time and that sort of thing, I find radio mask to be incredibly helpful and useful regardless of the shapes in your photo. So in today's video, this is kind of a quick tip about how I use radio masks and why I find them so useful. So let's start with the photo. There it is, a shot from Rome, blue hour. It was a longish exposure. You can see the people kind of ghosting. And uh, anyway, that's the shot. And there it is after, uh, you know, a little bit of work in Luminar with some, uh, I was about to say luminosity masks, with some radial masks. So I'm gonna hit reset on these. I'll walk through it and show you how I use radial masks to get the photo looking just the way I want it. Okay, here we are on the base layer. I'm in the light tool, and as you know, I can't um, turn the tool on and off on any layer. And I use it a couple of times in this video, so that's what the photo started like. And here it is after just a couple of minutes in light tool. As you can see here, tiny temperature increase, a little bit of contrast, pull down the highlights and lifted the shadows. There's nothing going on in advanced settings. So literally, it was just very basic from there to there, create a little bit of contrast, warmed it up, just a couple of minor things. Uh, and that's something I generally, um, I kind of recommend doing, it's it's a habit of mine. So maybe, you know, doesn't mean it should be a habit for you, uh, but it works well for me, I should say, to come in and do some basic edits, which for me is usually the light tool and maybe AI enhance, like accent AI or AI accent on the base layer before I start editing. So. I did that there, and that's the only thing I'm doing on this base layer. And then I've got a new adjustment layer, so let me turn that on and we'll jump into that piece. Okay, here we are, and now I've already got these layers created. I'm just gonna turn them on and off to show you. So I went in and created the radial mask, and let me show you what it looks like. And there we go, that is my focal area. So to be clear, when you create a radial mask, you can adjust the size and the shape uh, and the amount of gradient um, from the core dark red parts to where it fades to pink and to nothing. You can adjust all of that as well as tilt it, etc. cetera. Um, but it is an oval or circular shape. And so what I said at the beginning of the video was like, I don't shoot circles, why would I need it? But it works really well on scenes like this where you have a focal area and the rest of the stuff is, you know, for lack of a better word, kind of peripheral. The sky, clearly part of the scene, but it's not the focal area. This is shot straight down the middle, so your eye is kind of just gonna go straight down the middle. The middle is the core focal area, and you can cover that really well with the radial mask, and you're not gonna cover it with all the other masks, right, uh, nearly as well. So that's one of the reasons I think that works so well. So when I know I'm gonna go radial mask a layer, like in this case, I put the radial mask in first, and then I go do my edit. So there's the radial mask, it's in, and the first thing I do is apply light. And again, you can't uh, turn these off. So these are the adjustments I've made. Uh, basically a little bit of a temperature and tint increase and a little bit of contrast. And I don't think there's any, yeah, again, nothing else down there. So just a pretty basic and straightforward adjustment. And then I'm popping on over to AI Enhance. Let me turn that on. And you can see I bumped that up a little bit there. So what I'm doing is bringing up the visibility of that core central part of the photo, just kind of drawing your eye down that. And then I go to AI structure and I give that a little uh, crunch as well as a little bit of a boost. So a 34 and an 18, just again, trying to pop that and make it um, more detailed looking and also just more um, visible for you, right? So if you turn this layer off, let me do that real quick. You can see it's a little bit darker, a little bit less crispy, therefore less visibility and less likely to draw your eye. And now, we're getting there, right? I got a ways to go, but still, I think we're getting there and that's looking better because of the radial mask. Okay, now I'm gonna pop over to color and let me turn that on. And that's gonna have a nice little impact here. Um, a little bit of saturation and vibrance, but then also what I did is I went into the orange hue and I took it to the left 
and the yellow hue, and I took that to the left as well. So especially if you look at the orange color that's here on this building, let me turn that off. If you look at it there, it's a little bit more muted and a little bit um, just not as uh, powerful, I guess, for like for a better word. And now it pops a little bit more. And one of the things I'm doing is I wanted it to be more orange. So both the orange and the yellow hues I took to the left to make them kind of a bit more orangey. Um, in the case of yellow, I get it away from green. And in the case of orange, I get it kind of away from that yellowy chartreuse color, more toward the core orange. So it kind of saturates the color a little bit. Um, and what I'm gonna be drawing is some contrast between that orange bit and the blue sky because yellow and blue or orange and blue are good contrast colors. So I'm trying to bring that out in the photo a little bit more and that's one way I'm achieving that. And the next way I'm achieving that is over here with the landscape enhancer tool and I'm using golden hour and that's a pop of 20. So as you can see, let me turn that off again. If you look at the building, it's a little bit more muted and now it's a little bit brighter. It also hits more of the overall radial, which you may recall extends here into some of the sky. But basically this radial mask has been all about increasing the visibility, a little bit of pop of color and a little bit of structure to really create that center of the photo and give it more visibility and more pop. So now that that's done, what I would do is I go over here and I take this mask, you just go click um, on those three buttons and you say mask and you say copy and you hit that, then you add your new adjustment layer and then you come in and paste the mask and then invert it because my next radial mask, and this is why I like these so much, um, when you're doing them at the layer level, I'll do a, uh, a radial mask for the core central area and make all my edits inside of that. And then I'm gonna copy, paste, and invert the mask on this layer two that's coming. And then I'm gonna be editing outside. So I'm basically uh, working on the opposite part of the photo next. Okay, so here we are. Let me show you this mask. I'm gonna click on brush and I'll just highlight that. And again, it's a copy, a paste, and an invert of the mask from the layer below it. So all the stuff that you can see clearly is gonna be untouched. And as you can see, the gradient kind of begins here along this edge that I'm kind of circling, and it's a very light effect on this layer. They're going out, and it gets increasingly more intense. So here's the edge you can kind of see. Very light effect here, here, and then it gets more and more. And then by the time you get to about here, you get the full effect. So um, those radials with that gradient zone kind of being gradual, that's why I call it the gradient zone, um, it's, uh, it's a good way to overlap the effect without um, having one thing basically overwrite the other. So... Uh, I'm gonna start at light again, and as you know, I can't uh, turn these off, as I've said already a couple of times. So temperatures reduced, highlights are reduced. Pretty simple and straightforward. Again, I'm working on the fringes of the photo. I've got the core section looking good, I think. I'm working on the other stuff, and so I'm gonna do a few things here to draw contrast between the center core of the photo and that external part of the photo. So first step here was light, doing the uh, negative temperature and highlights. And I'm going to AI Enhance, but I'm not using AI Accent because that would brighten it. Instead, I'm using AI Sky Enhancer, which is, acts like a bit like a polarizing filter and is actually gonna darken the sky a little bit. So let me show you that one more time. If you look at the outer reg, uh, edges, now again, it's a Sky Enhancer, so it's only gonna be applying in the sky. But if you look at the before and the after, you can see the blues in the upper part of the sky have gotten a little bit darker, which again, helping me draw the contrast between the core center area and the external parts. Next move is AI structure, and here uh, I go negative structure and give it a little bit, bit of boost. Basically, I'm softening up those outer areas because again, I don't want you to focus on that. It's fine if you roam around the photo uh, you know, uh, freely uh, after you've seen it the first time, but the first time you see it, I'm trying to draw you straight down, and I think if I have more detail and more light and more color in the center, uh, that's warmer and then on the outside if I have less detail uh, less color and it's cooler I think that's gonna be a secondary place that you look so I'm kind of softening that up by using negative structure on that outside portion of the photo and the last move on this layer here is also in the color tool I did give it a little bit of vibrance because I like my vibrance uh, but also as you saw that blue adjust as I turned it on I went into blue and I took the luminance down negative 20 so I'm darkening that blue, which is darkening that outer area. So once again, the before, this color tool uh, looks like that, and the after, you can see it's a bit darker. Again, just drawing your attention down the center and creating a darker, cooler, less detailed look outside of that core center radial mask. 
And at this point, I was quite happy with the photo, but I, there were a couple of little things that were bothering me, so I went and added a new adjustment layer. So I'm gonna turn that on, I'll walk you through my last couple of touch-ups. Okay, I've got my adjustment layer three. This one will not use a radial mask, and that's because it's a touch-up layer where I'm going in and doing a couple of specific things in a couple of specific areas. Again, drawing the viewer's attention, and I prefer to do this anyway when I'm editing with several layers, is I'll do all my core edits and masking and blah, blah, blah. And then I'll usually come in with a touch-up layer and just say, okay, what's left, right? What did I miss? Or what needs a little bit more kick here or there? You know, where do I need to add some salt and pepper to season it to taste, in other words? So adjustment layer three, I'm gonna do two things. The first one is structure, and I'm gonna add a positive increase in structure, and I'm gonna do that kind of in this foreground area. So let me show you how I brushed this into the photo. You can see I'm focused on the walkway, the bridge itself, the building, and the sculptures as well. So um, I went ahead and did that, but basically if I turn this off, if you look at it before and then you look at it after, it, it, it crunches it up, but it also gives it a little bit of pop of brightness. Uh, and I like that. If you wanted to make it even brighter, you could come in with the light tool and drag the exposure to the right a little bit and then copy this mask from AI structure and paste it over there in the light tool and uh, brighten it that way. But I've actually got something else I'm gonna do a little bit of. Instead of brightening that whole area, I'm gonna go over here to Pro, go to Dodge and Burn, and I do a couple of minor adjustments here. And that is I paint in uh, at a low opacity, a little bit of brightness just in this core walkway. Um, and also on these sculptures because I thought they were a little bit dark. So look at the two sculptures and that core center walkway. I'm gonna turn this off. There you go. And now when I turn it back on, and I didn't do those sidewalks on the edge of the bridge where a number of the people are standing. I just did that core center part because again, to me, that's, I mean, that's the, the leading line that's taking you into the photo and to the building at the end but also the sculptures, they kind of anchor the photo in a lot of way and they anchor the frame. They also anchor that radial mask. And I thought they were just a little bit too dark, so I brightened them up. So one more time, there's the before and there's the after. And I noticed I probably bled over here a little bit. Um, so I can come back and fix that with dodge and burn. So be careful when you're doing it. But um, that's how I use radial masks, even without shooting circles or having round things in my photos. Radial masks come in really handy. I think they're powerful. I've gotten to where I use them all the time now. And that's how I use them to edit this photo and how I use them repeatedly in a lot of photos. It's finding core areas that make sense. You can get a kind of a circular slash oval type shape that covers an area just right and go edit within and then replicate that mask, invert it, and then edit on the outside to, uh, to effectively do some similar or possibly um, alternate or opposite edits like I did in this photo there. So one more time, here's my base photo. That's what I started with and that's my finished photo. And just splitting it down the middle here, you can kind of see how far we've come. I think the radial mask allowed me to really focus the light and the viewer's attention, create that center pop that I wanted and kind of reduce the distractions on the outside of the frame. That's how I do it with radial mask, my friends. I hope you find this helpful. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Give me a thumbs up if you like it. Let me know what kind of comments or feedback you have in the section down below. And I'll see you soon, my friends. Have a great day. Take care of yourselves out there and adios.